I'm David from Levika Photography, and I'm still wearing the same clothes. That's only because we're filming videos back to back. Don't think that just because it's uh, quarantine time that I'm not washing my clothes and wearing the same stuff every day for a week because, well, maybe I am doing that, but you'll never know. So anyway, uh, today we are going to do the Spider X Elite because it's elite. Actually, this thing is really cool. You guys know that I am big, big on color calibration. The most important thing when it comes to doing photography professionally is to have your monitor ca color calibrated just because it has to be dialed in and tight. We need tight. So today we're going to do it on a laptop. I'm going to show you how fast this is. Now, when it comes to actually using the Spider X Elite over the original Spider 5 Pro or Express, there isn't a huge difference as far as the actual quality of the color calibration, but what's a big difference is the speed, and I mean this thing is stupid fast. So in my last video, I showed you guys how to, how to use DisplayCal, which is a free color calibration software that's really kind of high-end. And DisplayCal does a really in-depth version of color calibration. What I discovered is this Data Color Elite, the new software that comes with it, actually has a few little surprises. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and show you guys exactly how this thing works. Go to datacolor.com spider uh, get spider x. So that's where your software is at. So that's the first thing we have to do. I have to do it. I have to touch my face. So I just downloaded the software. So now it says, do you want to make changes to this device? And obviously, yes. You just go ahead and install it. OK, so now we're installing this on a Microsoft Surface Book Pro 2. It's the best laptop ever made. <laughs> it has a pen. That's what makes it cool. Anyway, so anyway, we'll go ahead and click Next. All right, now it's installed. So from here, you're going to go to your desktop. You're going to right click. And you're going to go to your display settings. So what you're going to see is where it says adapter, monitor, and color management. And from here, you can open up color management. And you can say use my settings for this device. That's fine. Where it says profiles, you can reset that to the system defaults. And that's what I recommend that you do. And that will basically knock out the uh, display cal driver. And then from there, you uninstall DisplayCal. You uninstall the, uh, the display adapter drivers that came with it. And that's it. Um, but honestly, I still like DisplayCal. Just so you guys know, this isn't a bash on DisplayCal. I actually love that software. It's just this is so freaking fast that it's very useful. Plug this thing into the USB port. And then get ready to have it draped over wherever you want it. And so from here, I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And then we got to type in our code, which is in the bottom of our box. Now we're good to go. So now it's going to go ahead and load. Now, it, it's kind of the same software as before from Data Color. It's pretty simple. Um, so from here, it's Calibrate My Displays. And then uh, we can also do mobile tablet simulation, which we don't need to right now. We're just going to do the displays. Now from here, um, yes, we've warmed up. Yes, our lighting conditions are accurate. Yes, our dis display controls have been set to the defaults. And yes, the spider is connected. So from here, we can just hit Next. Now, I'm going to do this on laptop and then just hit Next as everything on default. And I just want to show you how stupid fast this thing is. So we're just going to do the step-by-step -step assistant. We're going to do full calibration and Everything is already good to go. So all we do is set this here. And 
this is live. We are not speeding this up. save and hit next and then we can switch between uncalibrated and calibrated and hit next and then that shows us exactly where we are as far as how srgb goes there 98 percent of srgb so yeah that was that was fast that was a two minute calibration two that's it that is insanely fast. So let's switch over to our other computer. So now for something a little different. Not only am I going to show you guys this display, but now we're going to calibrate maybe this TV? I don't know. We'll see if it works. But So this is the monitor that you guys see me shooting product on. This is just an old TV, an Insignia 42-inch 1080p TV. I've got this TV, so why not see if I can make a big screen out of it? So anyway, let's go ahead and try to calibrate it. Now the one problem that I have on this TV behind me is that when I move this over here, not only is the color shifting really bad, but it's also zoomed out a little bit. I don't think that's that big of a deal. It'd be cool to just have a secondary monitor to see what I'm doing. So we're going to go ahead and bring up the Spider X on here. We're going to let that load. And then we're going to go to Calibrate My Displays, and we're going to hit Next. And on this one, I do more of a pro calibration because this is my desktop. And so what I'm going to do is just choose Standard LED instead of Wide because these are standard LEDs. And then I'm going to hit Next. And then for here, I'm going to go to Expert Console, and then hit Next again. And so now I can basically put in what I want as my target. So my target's going to be uh, sRGB and my white point's going to be 6500K. Uh, 6, I can put this at whatever, but we're going to leave this at the recommended. Now the gamma is 2.2. I know this monitor is 2.2 and the TV probably is too, so I'm going to leave it as that. And then my luminance, um, I'm going to leave it as visual mode. So basically if you do measured mode it's going to take an ambient lighting temperature which is not what we need. And below it calibration on and then room lighting compensation also does the same thing. So if you're in a really bright room that's when you'd want to use room lighting compensation. But in this case this monitor brightness is about right. So with the TV um, I think this is probably about right. It's just very blue. Hit next, and then, oh, let me go back a couple of steps here. So I need to select which display I'm going to do. So mine's generic to uncalibrated, and we're going to say it's that. So now we're on this screen. So let me just rotate over here ugh, so you can see what's going on. And now I'm going to hit next, and then we're going to say desktop and then generic plug and play and we'll leave it as that and then for this we're going to choose standard LED and then expert console again and this is going to be 
2.2, that's the default. I like sRGB. So that's the one setting that I'm going to change. This gives you the best sRGB accuracy. So if you're doing this on a desktop computer, I highly recommend that you choose sRGB as your target. That's the configuration it's going to use. This does run a little bit longer than a regular mode. It, it doesn't take two minutes. It takes 10, but still definitely worth it. And uh, gray balance, I'm going to go to better. And that will take a little bit longer as well. Then from here, I just hit next. So from here, I can say next. So I put this on pro mode. So basically, this creates a few more targets. And uh, now it's going through and remeasuring what's on this display. Now, this is not a good display. So don't get your hopes up. But I think it would be kind of cool just to use it as a secondary monitor to make life a little bit easier. But the color shift between this one and the main monitor is pretty dramatic. So it would be nice if it was a little closer. So you can see this one goes through a lot more points than we just did on the laptop. And it's because we chose an sRGB calibration, which goes in a little deeper. But it's still fairly quick. This takes 10 minutes versus 2, so it's not so bad. OK, it just got done, so now let's hit Finish. Ah, that actually looks decent. That's not too bad. So we're going to go ahead and hit Save, and then Next. And then this is what it was before, and this is what it is now. That actually, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I'm actually kind of impressed. Now, if we go back and look at these comparatively, they're still not dead on. But that is decent. That is totally acceptable. So for a 10-year-old TV, I think it's doing OK. So we're going to go ahead and hit Save. The only problem is, you see how my bar here is cut off. There's nothing I can do about that. So you can see that this is 89% of sRGB versus on the other monitor, it's like 98%. So yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah, it's going to work. So maybe we'll have to try a 4K TV. That, that may have to happen. I switched over the main computer from DisplayCal uh, now to the Spider Elite um, just to make life a little bit easier because this recalibration in 10 minutes. So that means I can recalibrate both displays in 20 minutes doing the sRGB calibration. That makes life like way, way easier. Um, it's two hours per monitor on DisplayCal. Now granted, DisplayCal I still think is slightly more accurate, but if you've got three desktop systems that all have dual monitors like I do, and then a laptop on top of that, that's a lot to maintain. So I, I actually really dig the Spider X Elite. It's cool. So anyway, hope you guys like this video. Uh, the links to Spider X are going to be in the description, and links to buy it on Amazon are going to be in the description as well. I hope you guys like this video. Leave me a comment. Subscribe to my channel for more information like this, and we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.